Welcome to Danny Soap DIY, and today we're going to make a shadow salt box. This is a real easy make from Dollar Tree boxes. In our previous video, as you see right here, the link is below, we are using the insert boxes, and I've got you some optional ideas on the lighting for this. So the first thing that we need to start out with is the three insert boxes and stack them on top of each other because they are kind of odd in shape. Not everyone matches just right. Grab you your ice cream sticks and you'll need eight ice cream sticks. Now the reason why is we are going to place the sticks and you'll need three for the bottom box and you'll need three for the middle box, but you'll only need two for the top. So it'll give you a total of eight. You'll measure the sides because each one is a little different, so make sure you cut it to customizably fit your box. You'll glue those into place, but pay attention as to where you are gluing that. You need to look real close. We only want half of the width of the glue stick up the side. Now, as we put these together, you're going to see that they have a locking mechanism. They actually slide in to each other and this will form a tray-like, also to give it that primitive look. So we have our left and right side. Now we need to do our front. And I used hot glue on this particular part of assembling these boxes. Now the shadow salt box is really nice as a welcoming light. It just gives a low iridescent lighting so that you can see to perhaps get in the door or just as a nice little welcome illuminating your coffee bar. Now we're repeating those side glue in the sticks. And as you see here, they'll slide and snap into each other. Right now they're still warm, so they form really good and it makes this great big tower. So grab the wooden planks and we need to make our roof for the top. So use the very top box to mark a square. And now we need to cut that into triangles. So we're gonna just cut them into quarters. Grab that little handy dandy table saw we call our razor knife. And you know to go through there several times sawing at it. I always use a two by four as a prop and to make sure I don't cut my mat and I'm cutting wood. And they'll pop apart, trim off anything that might get left behind. Okay, so this is forming our pitches. And as we create this steeple at the top, we need to find the center mark, not only on the box, but also on the triangle. So this is just temporary. So we're gonna put a little spot of glue on each side just to glue those into place while we size up the actual roof planks. You see, I'm just eyeballing it right here and just that little bit of glue temporarily. Don't put a lot. So the next step, take your actual ice cream stick and when you hot glue it, only do it on the upper edge on the actual triangle. Now we can start sizing up the actual slats for the roof. And I lay them on each side and mark them accordingly. As I said, these are not perfectly squared boxes. And there again, using my heavy duty snips, I actually cut that difference off. Now I'm gonna hot glue it on to my pitches or my temple. Voila, we have our top mate. So now we can easily take and place this on top. Your sticks will be applied correctly. Now we have our tower mate and select the paint that you like. This is a Napa Red, and I took a brown and did some dry brushing. Now the option is a 10 count string of lights that you could use. You could actually drill a little hole through the center inside of them and run the lights up and put your battery pack in the bottom one if you don't want to deal with the tea lights. Next project, the Tinderbox Candle Caddy. You will love this. I took one of the crates and three of my paint stir sticks. Now I do a lot of home improvement and painting, but you can get these for free at your local Lowe's hardware store or Home Depot. 
So we need to size up our sides. And you'll want to cut off the difference depending on how tall you want your tinder box handle to be and adjust it accordingly. You'll need to mark your handle width by the actual box. And these are my cobalt heavy duty snips I'm telling you about. As you can see, just a single snip. And you can pick these up at your local hardware store. It is a necessity for us crafters. Now, the two pieces I doubled for the handle so it wouldn't be so cumbersome and be more heavy duty. Now, I'm just giving it a look before I start gluing. This is where your wood glue that's made by the Super Glue Company you find at Dollar Tree, you want to use as much wood glue as possible. It will hold for years. And then surround the outer part where the actual wood glue will not be with your hot melt glue. Then place it onto your box. This will give it super double duty durability. And with the handle, I put wood glue in the center and then hot melt around the edges, put it together. I'm using the wood glue on the sides. Now, once you get that into place, it will take it a moment to dry, but you can secure it by putting your glue insurance. Use your hot melt glue, go around it and do both sides. So moving on, this is great stuff. This is folk art stains, and this is the cherry. I'm gonna use a foam brush. Now when you stain it, the difference between a stain and a paint is paint gives coverage. Stain actually accentuates the wood and raises the grain and shows off the actual wood grain. Now right now you're seeing it as it's still damp, so allow it to dry, and when it does, it's gonna have that worn look. Another great tip, save your dowels from off of your foam brushes. They're great tools. Now grab you a foam brick, and this particular LED light is of the two-pack of the emergency lights that you can get at Dollar Tree. They come in a two-pack, and they do have a pedestal. But you can grubby that, so I left the link to the video down below of how to grubby up your candles. And if you do not have a holder with your candle, then use a ribbon spool. I trimmed out cardboard and placed it in the bottom because I did not want glue on my wood. It will soak into this raw wood because it's just stained. And I used my putty knife to saw my foam in half. Makes it a breeze. Grab you a piece of your burlap and you're going to place that over top of the foam. But watch closely, I am snipping the center just enough to open it up because the burlap holes will serve as a flower frog for placing our florals. Now we have our candle in place. Let's get to the decorating. So I'm gonna teach you how I made my berry pip picks. I used the willow and the berries from Dollar Tree. And you're gonna go about snipping that bundle apart because the way that it's fused together and glued and they put the coating on it, these stick together really tight bundles. But if you work with it just a minute and take your scissors, you can snap them into pieces, just like you were cutting broccoli. And this is the best way to make your own handmade pit berry picks. Now I took those willow branches and I cut them into different pieces. I placed my berries all about them with hot glue melt. And using my Sure Bonder glue, it just takes a dab and they will hold and not come off. And put them in bundles, singular, and all about the willow. Now on those branches, since they're glued, grab your Sharpie, it fixes everything. And the white foam that's exposed, color it in with your Sharpie marker. It'll only take a minute. Then go about placing your picks in your box and stay close to the sides. Wrap you some jute twine around the handle. That is going to mask the hot glue and make it look more primitive. So now you have your primitive tender candle caddy. Now I had these metal stars I got from Walmart and I popped off the side and I'm teaching you here 
two for one bonus how you can get two metal stars out of that one ornament. Using my putty knife and my needle nose pliers, if you press on it, it'll pop. And then you can fold it back and get two of them. Make sure you go back with your needle nose pliers, press down the metal so it's not sharp, hot glue it into place. Grab you some homespun and your crimping shears. Cut and trim it off. And you just want to put this in the front of the box. This is without lace. But I grabbed my lace to give it an even more southern appeal. That real country rustic style charm. Folded it V-wise like a napkin and just tucked it in the front. Would you use lace or not? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your opinion. And voila, here we are. They are beautiful. As I said, you could grubby up this LED emergency candle really easy. Follow the link in the description box down below for the grubby candles. And of course, if you want to check out the primitive cabinet that's in the background, the little mini medicine cabinet, you'll find the link down below as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead, punch the button, and welcome to Dandy Soap DIY. I'm Elizabeth. I would love to hear what you guys would have done in your spin on this and make sure you share your photos with me on all the social media outlets. Click the like button that lets YouTube and me know that you enjoy this and would like to see more. Till the next DIY, well, I'll be crafting y'all. This is Elizabeth. Bye now.